Hello, I'm Simon and this is my phone. And it can do basically everything for me. Hey Siri, could you please finish my maths exercises for me? Well, of course it can't do everything, but I would say it can do quite a lot. And this is true for all the modern computers. They are all able to do a hell of a lot of things. And all this is thanks to the power of transistors. Transistors are fundamental technology that are used in almost all modern electronical devices. The Apple 8AX chip, which is used in the iPad Air 2, contains over 3 billion transistors. And this is on a surface area of only 128 square millimeters. If you're wondering, that's about this much. You've probably heard all those numbers before, but apart from telling you that transistors are really small, do they really mean anything to you? Well, today I'm gonna try to give you a brief overview over where transistors came from, how they work, and why they are so important for our modern technology. The first one to patent so-called field effect transistors was dope-looking dude Julius Edgar Lilienfeld. He was born in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is now the Ukraine, and studied physics, chemistry and philosophy in Berlin. After that, he continued to research, teach and live in Germany. During that time, he issued quite a few patents in the US, and this was also one of the reasons why in 1926, he resigned all his positions in Germany and completely moved over to the US. This is also where on the 8th of October 1926, he issued the first of three patents for the first technology ever described as a field effect transistor. However, because the materials that he needed to build those transistors weren't available at the time, the technology didn't make it to commercial use till the 1960s. In the next few years, not a lot happened until 1936, when the Bell Labs in America became interested in transistor technology. So in the same year, they started hiring quite a few new researchers, and two of them were Walter Britton, Britain, Britain, Britain. For Walter Breton and William Shockley. However, their first attempts at constructing transistor-like prototypes all failed and it wasn't until after World War II when theoretical physicist John Bardeen joined the team that this changed. Here you can see a picture of the three of them sciencing the shit out of something. Together the trio managed to construct the first working transistor on the 16th of December 1947. Only a few years later, in 1956, the three got awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on transistors. By the way, the term transistor was also coined in 1948 at the Bell Labs and stands for a conjunction of the two words transfer and resistor. So all this is nice to know, but we still don't really know how transistors work and what they do. The first transistors, like the ones that were constructed by Shockley, Bardeen and Breton, were used mostly as amplifiers. Maybe you've heard of the famous transistor radio. This radio used transistors to amplify the electrical signals before sending them to the speaker. The second and most important use for modern transistors is the use as a simple switch that can turn on and off. And now we're gonna find out how exactly that works. The transistor we use most in modern technology is called MOSFET. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. That is quite a mouthful, but bear with me, we're gonna find out how it works and what it means. Let's start with the semiconductor part. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how semiconductors work, but I'm going to give you a rough overview. A so-called doped semiconductor is a kind of material in which most of the atoms are bound in a crystallic structure and cannot move around. However, there are some free particles like electrons that can move around freely. There are two types of doped semiconductors. N-type and P-type. In the N-type we have three negative charges moving around, electrons. In the P-type there are three positive charges moving around. Inside of a commonly used MOSFET you will find both types of semiconductors merged together like this. Also there is a metal contact here which is isolated from the semiconductors by an oxid layer. The transistor has three contacts in total, the gate, the drain and the source contact. The semiconductors are not isolated from each other and that means that a few electrons from the n-type get attracted over to the p-type to merge with the positive charges. This means that on the edge between the n-type and the p-type, the p-type becomes slightly negatively charged 
because there are more electrons there than there were before. This in return means that no more electrons can move from the n-type into the p-type since they get repelled by the negative charge. We have reached a stable condition. There are no electrons that can move over into the p-type and so there is no current flowing from the source to the drain. The switch is off. So let's see how we can turn on the switch. If you apply a positive voltage to the gate, what happens is that the positive charges in the p-type get repelled and move away from the gate. If you increase the voltage on the gate a bit more, the electrons in the n-type semiconductor will get attracted so much that they are able to tunnel through the edge between the semiconductors and into the p-type semiconductor. The electrons are now the only free charges that are able to move freely in the space under the gate contact. However, since the gate contact is isolated from the semiconductors, the electrons cannot move up there and so they will move over to the right, over to the drain. By doing this, they form a conducting channel in which electrons can move over from the source to the drain. To ensure that the electrons will be moving this way and not the other way around, in this type of transistor, the drain usually has a slightly higher positive charge than the source. The current is now flowing and the switch is turned on. So this is how the transistor can be used as a switch. But how can it be used as an amplifier? If you increase the voltage on the gate even more, more electrons will get attracted over into the conducting channel. And so the current moving through the channel will be increased. This means that now you have a voltage operated amplifier. The higher the voltage, the more electrons will move through the channel. And the higher the current becomes. There are three main benefits of using this technology. Number one is that you don't have any moving parts. You only need a voltage and you can activate and deactivate the switch as often as you want. Number two is that you can make transistors incredibly small. Because you don't have any moving parts and you're only working on the atomic level, you can basically make them as small as you want. The third big benefit is that you have a really low power consumption. But how exactly are transistors used to make computers work? Well, as it turns out, you only need switches to build any logical circuit. And so transistors can, for example, be used to build logic gates. You know those redstone things that will always cause you to have a headache when you try to build them in Minecraft? Well, those are logic gates. And electrical logic gates work almost the same way. They connect one or more variables together logically. For example, this is an AND gate. The output will only be one if both of the inputs are one. In any other case, the output will be zero. There are quite a few of those logic gates and they can be used to build even more complicated structures like flip-flops. No, not the shoes. Flip-flops are special circuits like this who can be used to store data. One flip-flop can store one bit at a time and connected together, of course, they can store a lot more. So as you might have realized by now, transistors are only the first little piece in a long chain of things, inventions and logical circuits that have made computers possible. However, without the invention of the transistor, it would have never been possible to make computers this small. And because transistors can switch on and off so goddamn fast, computers can be as fast as they are today. So I really hope that you liked this video and maybe even found it a little interesting. Feel free to tell me in the comments below what you liked and what you didn't like. I would be really glad to read your comments. And all I have left to say is bye bye and see you next time.